Venice is sinking. Yes, you heard me correctly. Venice is sinking. But we know this though, because, well, we can see it. Take for example the Rialto Bridge. This is a photo of it from 1900. And this is a photo of it from basically the exact same spot in 2021. You can see that four, maybe five of the six steps are underwater now. So the idea of Venice sinking isn't much of a question of if, but rather of when. The thing is though, Venice can potentially be saved. But to understand how, we must first understand the way in which Venice was built. Originally nothing more than a marshland and lagoon with a few poor fishermen living there, it became populated by Roman refugees from nearby cities fleeing successive waves of Germanic and Huns invasions and using the marshy lagoon for protection. But as the population of the area continued to grow, it became essential to create space for everyone. Venice is made up of only about 118 small islands. And as the centuries went by, there was a need for more and more dry land, as well as a stronger foundation. This is where the magic happened. Venice did not expand like cities normally do, from a core outwards. Rather, the many different island settlements gradually expanded until their boundaries met. How they did this was by first dredging the marshes, constructing a series of canals that would divert the water away and reveal more land for them to build upon. The sides of these canals were then strengthened with wooden planks and stakes to prevent them from being refilled by the tides. The land itself is an even more interesting case. The Venetians pounded thousands of closely spaced together wooden piles, measuring at about 60 feet in length, deep into the water. These piles go so deep that they reach past the weak soil and dirt to a portion of the ground that was hard clay, which could hold the weight of the buildings placed on the piles above. Then, they cut off the tops of these wooden piles and created solid, wooden platforms to sit on top of it. A layer of Istrian limestone was then built on top of the platforms. And finally, the actual homes were built on this foundation. Here's a visual representation of it that definitely simplifies it better than I can. You'll notice though, that this means a ton of wood was used in constructing Venice. And there's actually numbers for this. Take for instance the famous Rialto Bridge. It lies on about 30,000 wooden stakes. Or the stunning Santa Maria della Salute Church. It lies on a little over 1.1 million wooden stakes. In fact, Venice itself is held up by over 10 million of these wooden locks. An insane number, but also an unexplainable one, because the islands of Venice were flanked by marshlands and sea. There was like no forest originally, meaning all the wood had to be imported from the mountains of Slovenia, Croatia, and Montenegro. So basically, the Venice we see today is held up by millions of wooden planks that are over a thousand years old, all imported from nearby countries. But I mean, hey, this technique has worked for over a thousand years. The reason is because the underwater wood never rots. You see, normally the decay of wood is caused by microorganisms, such as fungi and bacteria, but the wooden stakes at the bottom holding up Venice are fully underwater, meaning they're never exposed to oxygen, a key element needed by most microorganisms to survive. That's why the tops of the wood were sliced off before the wooden platforms, so none of it would be exposed to the air. Then you add to that the fact that the constant flow of mineral-rich salt water around Venice petrified the wood over time, turning it into a hardened stone-like structure. That's basically the secret to Venice's longevity. This isn't an unheard of system for building cities either. There's even a name for it, indirect foundations. And it's actually existed since the days of the Roman Empire. The Venetians just improved and developed it. So how is any of this relevant to Venice sinking today? Well, it all is. Venice is commonly referred to as the floating city. But the reality is that it's been sinking for just as long as it's been floating. From the very beginning, the weight of the city pushed down on the dirt and mud that it was built on, squeezing out water and compacting the soil. It's known as land subsidence, where everything kind of just caves in. The problem intensified even further in the 1950s and 60s, when groundwater was pumped out from under Venice for industrial uses, causing the city to cave into the earth even further. Just to understand how damaging this was, during these two decades, Venice sank 5 inches, whereas now it's only sinking at 0.04 inches per year. This practice was of course abruptly stopped once people realized the damages it was doing, but it still had a lasting effect. This photo here shows the impacts of land subsidence on Venice from 1966 to 2006. And as you can see, quite a bit has sunk, ever so slightly. And yes, even though I did just talk about how the clay underneath Venice has held the wood so sturdily, and the wood has almost turned into stone being underwater for so long, nothing lasts forever. Wood still decays in oxygen deficient areas. It just takes a lot longer. And lasting over 1,500 years is not a small feat itself. But it would be too easy to fully blame human 
human-induced subsidence as the reason for Venice's problems. Obviously, there's way more to it. There's the natural aspect of it happening too, due to tectonic plates. Venice sits on the Adriatic Plate, which is subducting under the Apennines Mountains, causing the city to lose elevation. Overall, subsidence is sinking Venice at about 1 to 2 inches each century. Yet despite all this, sinking isn't Venice's only threat, nor biggest. That would be rising sea levels since the water is rising faster than Venice is sinking. It's expected that by 2100, the sea level of Venice will rise between half a foot to four feet. Even though that estimation is within a big range, even small increases will still be extremely costly for the Italian city. Because of these effects from climate change, flooding has increased exponentially as well. Floods above three feet are known as aqua alta, or high water in English. It's the phenomenon when Venice is fully flooded. They're generally caused by unusually high tides due to strong winds, storm surges and severe rains. It's been happening more frequently in recent years due to the rising sea level, which has also started to alarm the city. This graph here shows how, over time, the frequency of aqua alta floodings have continuously gone up. In the past 20 years, Venice has experienced 163 instances of such floods, whereas in the past 100 years before that, it was almost the same amount at 166. These floods have basically become as common as North Korea threatening South Korea, which, well, is endless. The problem with these floods is not only the fact that they basically make Venice unlivable, like for instance in 2019 when water submerged up to 85% of the city and rose to almost 7 feet in some areas, but also because they damage the city in long-term ways. When Venice becomes flooded, water infiltrates the building foundations and starts to decay them. As a result, the ground floor of many of Venice's buildings have become uninhabitable. Don't get it twisted either, Venice won't simply sink and disappear like Atlantis. It'll crumble and fall down as well. I mean, it's already slightly tilting to the east. It's a serious issue. In fact, it's predicted that if nothing changes, Venice will be underwater by the year 2100. All of these factors have led to the Mose system. This isn't some new project to try save Venice. It was originally brainstormed in the late 1980s, with the project officially being launched in 2003. What it consists of is a mile of 78 storm barriers that lie flat on the seafloor until needed. They're placed at three separate inlets, in Lido, Malamocco, and Chioggia. When the water level is predicted to rise about 3.5 feet above regular level, the barrier is raised by air being pumped into it, draining out the water. They float upwards until they emerge above the water, like this, at which point they form a barrier of up to 10 feet, with the Adriatic surging against them on one side and the lagoon relatively calm on the other. Then, when the tide subsides, water is pumped back into the fins and the water is expelled, lowering them down again into their open position underwater, which you can see here. They're also intentionally hidden underwater when not in use, unlike the ones in Rotterdam or New Orleans, for example, to retain the beauty of the area. Mose has been tested successfully too, having been deployed over 25 times since 2020. There have been some issues though, and this may not end up being an actual solution. The first problem is the delays and rising costs of it. Mose was supposed to be fully operational in 2011, then 2014, then 2021, and now December 2023. These repeated delays, combined with the cost rising from an original $4.5 billion to $6 billion at least, and the cost being almost $330,000 every time it's used, double the original estimate, means it might not work out. Then there's the bigger issue of sustainability. While the Mose system does hypothetically work, the problem is that as the sea level keeps rising, Mohs will need to be raised so often that it'd function as a near-permanent wall, which in turn would destroy Venice's lagoon and turn it into a pool for algae and waste, killing the ecosystem and maritime economy in just a few decades. Basically, in order to save the lagoon, you would have to open the gates, the only barrier against flooding. So, simply put, the Mohs system is an inadequate, short-term way of protecting the city and won't be enough. There have been other ideas though. One of them, which was actually proposed in the 1970s, involves injecting fluid cement beneath the city as a way to raise it above the floodwater thresholds. It's been successfully tested before too, on the small island of Poveglia in the Venetian lagoon in the 1970s, raising the island 4 inches. The other technique, which this time involves injecting billions of gallons of seawater under Venice, would make the city rise by as much as a foot. It starts from a dozen wells surrounding Venice in a six-mile circle that would pump water into the ground over a 10-year period, nearly 40 billion gallons in total. The reason for this is if everything is sinking inwards, you can offset it by just dumping tons of water into it. Remember, Venice was sinking rapidly in the 50s and 60s because people were extracting the water from under it. This is basically just reversing that to save it. This method is a scientifically solid one that's widely used to stabilize oil rigs as they extract fluid. 
so it can possibly work. You see, Mohs isn't enough due to how often the barriers would need to be raised, but if we combine it with another idea such as raising the city itself, then it can heavily lower the amount of times Mohs would need to be used, making this a potential solution. But none of these ideas have been implemented or really considered as of now. Whatever happens though, Venice needs to be saved, being one of the most beautiful and iconic cities in the world. Losing it would be detrimental to not only Italy, but the entire world. If Venice does end up sinking due to the rising sea levels, well, then we'll have much bigger problems to worry about.